Joining me now is Chad Williams, the founder of Red Cloud Mining Capital. Great to see you again. Yeah, likewise, Larry. So you were part of our uh, live show the other day as part of uh, National Mining Week, and and uh, your, your key thrust was about attracting young people to the uh, industry, what the issues are, what the challenges are, how to solve it. You told a story as well, Chad, about uh, one of your daughters, about 10 years ago, you're driving, and she says something like, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but Dad, I'm really embarrassed you're in the mining industry. So and you, you literally pulled over and, and had a chat with her. And, and so how did that sort of evolve and how did that change your thinking? Okay, well, a few things you mentioned. Uh, one is that, um, you know, the, the, the aging demographic in our industry, if we can call it that, is very worrisome. And, you know, I get asked from time to time what keeps me awake at night about our industry. And, and that is the number one issue to me because... Uh, the average investor is probably well over 45 years old, probably white, probably male. Um, and that's a big problem because as, uh, us older, uh, investors, as we age, we get more risk averse and are less likely to invest in mining, which is deemed to be a cyclical speculative industry. So where are uh, the investors, where, where's the, 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 new, the new investor going to come from? And, uh, and of course, the corollary to that is who is going to run these mines and who, uh, you know, who's going to populate the, the C-suite of these mining companies? Um, that is a big, big problem, and it's going to get worse. I mean... Uh, you mentioned the anecdote about my daughter, and I'll talk about that in a second. But another anecdote is when I graduated from McGill in mining engineering in 1989, there were four of us, okay? So uh, you can imagine that uh, there just aren't that many people in, in the industry. How do we attract talent? And uh, yeah, my daughter, you know, the irony is uh, she was taught in school that mining is bad, mining is you know, toxic for the environment and all of that. And I pulled over and I said, you know, uh, this car is made out of metal. That's got to come from somewhere. The building is made out of stone. That's got to come from somewhere. And uh, she was, you know, grumpy for a little while. But as she uh, learned more about mining and the irony, to finish the story, is that she ended up being uh, the assistant to a mining analyst and working in mining research. And uh, she, I wouldn't say loves mining, but she understands mining. And she said something very important to me once. She said, if you can show me or show, uh, you know, us really, uh, my, uh, her demographic, the, the, the Gen Z or millennials or whatever, whatever you want to call them, if you can show us that we can make money rule and that it is okay for the environment, you know, if you can educate us, then we will invest because we get up in the morning and we have mortgages too, and we need to buy groceries too. And we'll invest in, in all kinds of things like Tesla or Microsoft or uh, NVIDIA. But the point is, if I can make money, if we can make money in mining, we'll be interested. So we need to show that to them. Right. You've said that the industry's done a poor job letting young people know that, hey, this can be lucrative for you. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cool new technology that we're using. We actually care about the environment. Uh, you know, a lot of it, uh, critical minerals, of course, lead directly to uh, to EVs. And uh, most young people think those are pretty cool. So uh, in a perfect world, like how do, how do you educate like across the across the spectrum of the, the sector in terms of making it um, a full a full court press, so to speak? And so everybody knows. It's a, it's a good question. I don't have, obviously, all the solutions, but I think as an industry, if we make it interesting um, and, and we encourage a, a small example, that it worked for me, scholarships in, in university, you know? Uh, you can be a, an electrical engineer and, and come out with a $150,000 debt, uh, or you could be a mining engineer and actually make money right, with scholarships and, and good summer jobs. Uh, mining jobs are probably, I, I don't have an accurate statistic, but my gut uh, feel is that probably two or three times the pay of 
uh, you know, the equivalent uh, for for a university graduate. So if you go into mining, you make three times as much as you would if you go into forestry, say. Okay. Um, so grants, uh, higher uh, pay, uh, education. Um, you know, it's a complex thing, and it will take time. Uh, one one of the unfortunate aspects of mining is that uh, we are ranked number two worst for innovation of any industry in the world. And you're gonna wonder what number one is. So I'll spoil the. Uh, I'll I'll get the. Uh, uh, I'll give you the, the revelation. It's agriculture. So mining is not seen as, uh, you know, somewhere that's it. But, you know, the mining industry wants to electrify. Uh, there are many reasons to do that. The technology isn't there yet, but, you know, for uh, EV trucks and, and, and things like that. The mining industry wants to, but mining is very cyclical. So when the money, when, when, when the commodity prices are high and mining companies are making a lot of money, they're focused on production and getting the ore and the metals out. They're not focused on innovation. And then when the commodity price is down, they're starving and they have no money for innovation. So how do we smooth those cycles out so that as an industry, we innovate? Is it more government funding? Is it, you know, uh, at Red Cloud, we're very vocal about pension fund investment in mining. Is that a solution? Um, you know, uh, is it, is it uh, yeah, government grants from not just from in Canada, but US, UK, Australia. So it's, it's a complicated thing. But one message I would like to leave is that uh, if you are a young person, and I've seen it time and time again, we've seen it at Red Cloud, even if you are not from the mining industry, you're not a geologist or mining engineer or geophysicist, you know, if you've got a general uh, education and you have a little bit of interest in mining, look into it. It's an interesting industry with interesting people. And if you get the cycle right, it could be exceedingly lucrative. There's, you know, in Toronto, for example, uh, we've got University Avenue with all the hospitals, you know. And that was another example of, of a drive with my daughter. I said, look at, uh, you know, this is a Peter Monk wing or the Rob McEwen uh, wing or Seymour Schulich or Pierre Lassonde. I mean, these are captains of Canadian industry and they made their money in mining. Mm -hmm. So it is possible to do it in mining. Right. You mentioned before the World Gold Council does a good job marketing with those Idris Alba uh, videos explaining their story. Uh, it's probably unrealistic to, to think that everybody could do the same thing across the board. So will these initiatives remain just kind of on an ad hoc basis and and, and everybody within the sector will do the best they can to educate and, and get the word out? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, it's a very fragmented business. There are 3,500 roughly listed public mining companies. 98% of them have a market value of less than $15 million dollars. So it's impossible for them to 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 mobilize and 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 join forces. Uh, the big company, I mean, the World Gold Council. How that works is there's a a tax, if you will, for each gold producer. They pay a, a certain amount of of money for each gold ounce they produce to the World Gold. And so it's a little bit like the De Beers model, where uh, they market intent with big budgets and market intensely. But do I see the World the Zinc Council or the World Niobium Council, or it's just a tough, tough one. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's going to be difficult to to pull that one. Okay. Well, thanks again for your insight, and we'll be following along to see how everything evolves. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chad. Chad Williams, founder of Red Cloud Mining Capital.